Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Suzerain Rizia, the first DLC out for Suzerain. Uh, it is the late game in this series, we're into episode number 18 of our Let's Play series in this game. And I won't rehash everything because you've been watching for 18 episodes, right? So you probably know what's going on. All I will sort of open this episode with saying is if you missed the previous episode, the war is not going well. We started a war with with Pales, our neighbor, over a gas field dispute. Um, they sort of attacked our ships. We fired the first shot, but they rammed and crippled our capital ship, and that led to an outright war with our neighbor, who we do have historical claims on, uh, but really this is over, over natural gas that's off the coast. And the war has not been going well. They've launched an offensive in the north and done a lot of damage to our troops. We've launched an offensive in the south, which has had a modest amount of a modest amount of success, but the enemy just has way more troops and personnel and technology than us, and things have not been not been going well. Meanwhile, this episode is actually opening opening with all of that as the backdrop. Our character is about to go to a university uh, for a is it a graduation? No, it's an anniversary speech for sort of our nation's oldest, most historic university, and so we're going to this region that is right now being run by a duke who is our uncle's nephew, or uncle's son, so our nephew. Uh, and he is sort of a heavy-handed ruler. He isn't from this region. This region was given to our family to manage due to a coup that occurred before the game started. Um, and so this is sort of a land that doesn't view our family as sort of their rightful rulers. This is a land of uh, young, educated uh, citizens who are speaking out about things not being just. And it's also a land where our duke is heavy-handed and not a very effective leader. And that's all sort of culminating in he's going to be giving a speech at this university where he's largely hated. Uh, and our own character, the king, is coming in for the speech as well. So, you know, talk about pouring gasoline on a fire plus the backdrop of the war. We'll see how this goes. Uh, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. As always, so there's a link in the description if you're interested in checking things out over there. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. 750th anniversary of the University of whatever. We're gonna get cooed. Cameras flash all around as my royal motorcade rolled up to the Iza University Auditorium entrance. As King of Rizia, I had been invited to speak at the institution's 750th anniversary. Vina had agreed to come along with Manus Asser Date. The two of them were in the car behind me. Well, that's stupid. Why the hell would you go... Ugh. So, like, we know there's a threat. We know that Vina and Manus are a problem. There should be a decision of bring Vina and Manus or don't. You don't have to be... Like, you can refuse to do the whole we're gonna just let you get your way without being like we're gonna be stupid about it. The driver came around to my door. I took a look at the, out the window. We'd stopped right in front of the statue of my father. His head had been replaced. The likeness looked as good as new. I don't think you should exit the car yet, Your Majesty. My scouts report a number of individuals protesting near the entrance. Sue Amani members by the looks of it. Yeah, I should have expected this. No shit. Leave them be, just make sure I don't get attacked. Let's not start the shooting. They're gonna wipe out House Cezanne, aren't they? Many of war outfits adorned with the Easy University mascot, an anthro Fomorphic cactus named Spiky. <laughs> what a nice little little tidbit in there. My YouTube videos are not up to date with my streams, Elias. Considerably behind. They rose and cheered enthusiastically as I proceeded down the hall. I was halfway to the stage when the hall erupted into cheers. I turned my head to see Vina and Manus waving to the crowd. Behind him was a dark haired woman, Angelica. Stop and talk to her. She approached me with a smile. 
King Romus, we meet at last. Duchess Cezanne, it's a pleasure to see you here in Isa. Likewise, Your Majesty. I watched your coronation from Calcabiz. It disgusted me to think of how close my husband came to keeping you from the throne. Well, if we're going to play the pardoner, I should at least say I don't blame him. Or maybe I should say his methods left something to be desired. I didn't get along with my father, right? A revolution bought with blood will never succeed. Her eyes traveled past me to Rico, who was already sitting on stage. I should be getting to my seat. We will speak again soon. Enjoy the festivities, Duchess. Please, Your Majesty, call me Angelica. She stepped away from me and continued down the aisle. Venus split off for the front row as I took my place on stage next to Rico. He was seated with his legs spread out, his expression radiating barely concealed disdain. Sit properly and show some respect to this venerable institution, Duke Ricardus. They don't respect me around here, I don't see why I should respect them. But as His Majesty commands. After a short presentation about the history of the university, she invited the Duke of Iza to speak. Nobody clapped as Rico took the stage. My cousin stepped behind the podium and cleared his throat. As reigning Duke of Iza, I am honored to speak at the anniversary of, the Rizia, of Rizia's most renowned university. I must confess to you all, the only higher education I received is from the School of Life. <laughs> oh yeah, you're one of those guys. Oh, I'm, I'm trained in the hard knocks of life. Okay. And I hadn't even graduated yet. A few people in the back row laughed. But when I took charge of Iza, I realized what an important role this institution plays. Iza University was founded in order to preserve our kingdom's cherished traditions and pass them on to the next generation to instill young people like yourselves with a stable moral center and even one when one is lacking outside these walls. But somehow over the years that purpose was lost. The school has become a breeding ground for an ideology that prioritizes foreign perspectives over our own, a place where this nation's greatest achievements are seen as problems to be wor worried over, not triumphs to be celebrated, and where youths respond to the harsh reality of war not by raising to defend their nation but by waving signs and chanting. This isn't education, it's indoctrinate. No, Rico, what you would have is indoctrination, not education. A student sitting near the front yelled, fascist. Rico jerked his head in their direction. See, that's exactly what I mean. All at once, the people sitting in the back row stood up. They were all wearing military-style jackets with patches bearing the Su Amania insignia. Of course. What is he going to do, mow them all down? Ha, huh, try that and study your way out of that. Okay, can I... Mm. This is perfectly set up for him to basically wipe out the Saisons, because apparently a bunch of Saison nobility are here. The question is, where are the police under Lucia, Lucida's control? Or are they all at the front? I don't have the I don't have the police force to waste this dude. I didn't expand my local police. Unhand her. They let go of the student. She raced past them and out of the auditorium. Fuck you, Rico. It's time for the king to speak. I have this under control, your majesty. That girl had done nothing. You embarrassed us both. I glanced at Titus. He was scanning the crowd, alert for the slightest sign of danger. I took out notes and that I had prepared. I 
fellow Rizians. I apologize for the earlier interruption. It was unbefitting of this momentous occasion. After nearly a millennium, Iza University remains a beacon of freedom and a kingdom that so has, has so rarely enjoyed it. I mean, I don't think I can do anything about Rico. I don't know if I can overthrow him, but we'll see. Which is why I'm truly dismayed that the Duke of Iza has allowed a culture of hate and intolerance to pervade this place. He speaks of unity and yet seeks to draw arbitrary lines between us and them. My rain, I've, I guess I've gone full try to circumvent the coup by joining the opposition. Uh, my reign is all about breaking away from the constraints of the past. It is time for Iza to do exactly that. I would therefore like to announce that I am removing Ricardus Torres from power, effective immediately. Titus grabbed his shoulder and forced him back into his chair. Shrieks came from the audience as, do as a dozen Omanus members rushed the stage. Titus and his fellow Golden Guards moved swiftly to interrupt them. Before I knew it, a full-on brawl had broken out. The teachers and students began streaming toward the exits. Secure the Duke, but harm no one. One of Rico's defenders lay crumpled on the ground, bleeding from his wound in his shoulder. The central police, missing in action until now, finally materialized to take the man away. The audience chatter had escalated into a cacophony. I motioned for silence. You're welcome, Isa. <laughs> oh... I regret that you all had to witness that. I do not wish to shift the focus from today's celebrations, but I will say this. Two is probably too anti-monarchical for the way I have played to this point. So I will say I have pardoned the Duke, Duchess of Iza, Angelica Cezanne. I now call upon her to resume the governorship of her rightful throne, home, but she'll be transferred back to the province of Brennus. Rico was frozen to his seat. He seemed to be processing everything that had happened. He was right. 
Hugo wouldn't stand for this. But with House Saison on my side, perhaps I could still weather the storm. Angelica Saison is inaugurated. Can't we arrest him? Oh boy. Fly to the Queen. Reports emerge of torture prisons with the BFF. Decide how to manage the refugees. I don't have the ability to buy any more equipment, so I might as well launch a large-scale humanitarian effort. Where's the biscuit when I need it? Uh, Sue Omani destabilizing in incitements. Rico Torres. Okay. Don't look at Saison. Isa State integrated to Brennis. You're almost the humanitarian. Yeah, that's me. All right, Hugo's gonna probably resign or threaten to lead a coup or something. granted Hugo permission to enter, and he walked in. He seemed more sad than angry, something that took me off guard. Your Majesty? You can arise, Uncle. There's no need for that. Romus, my king, may I speak freely? You always have, Hugo. Speak your mind. About your decision to remove him as the Duke of Isa. I understand that he was not popular in the city, and yet... It was not a decision made lightly, Uncle. The entire population was demanding his removal. I understand the weight of the crown and the decision it demands, but he is my son, Romus. And I was not consulted. I understand what it looks like, Hugo, but Rico failed at his job. I wouldn't do anything to hurt House Torres. I have served this family and this kingdom all my life, Romus. My loyalty has never wavered. But as a father yourself, you must understand. We should have investigated Hugo. We investigated Titus instead, which feels like a mistake. Your loyalty and your service to our family and kingdom have never been in question. I'm open to discussing how we might address the situation. What amends do you seek? I'm asking for some 
something in return, a role, an estate, something to maintain the dignity my son of my son and provide a path forward for him. I understand you cannot offer him a title right after revoking it, but please consider offering him a job in the capital. How about he works for you, your security counselor, as the chief security of- No. I am not putting him in a position where he can do something to... I am not going to trust Rico with the security of our capital. Minister of Fisheries. Sure, I'll send him to go do that. Okay. What's Rumberg going to do for us? A thump of airplane wheels on asphalt jolted me from my sleep. I was seated in the commercial jet we'd chartered for our royal visit to Thomboro. It had been a long, bumpy ride. Lucidia was in the seat next to me. On seeing I was awake, she squeezed my hand surreptitiously. Good morning, Your Majesty. I'm glad you were able to get some rest. I was having the most marvelous dream. I think you were involved. How fascinating. I suggest we unpack its meeting in private later. <laughs> I hope the queen is in a good mood. Rumberg's support could really turn the tide against pals. No, I need more soldiers. I need more equipment. I need everything. She had better be. We've been bending over backwards for Rumberg since my coronation. My dear, dear brother-in-law, you've gotten yourself into quite the mess, haven't you? Mess is an understatement. Yes, well, fear not. She abruptly turned in regard to Lucidia, who was standing behind me. Duchess Cesaro, your reputation precedes you. A pleasure to finally meet you, Your Excellency. I hope you've only heard good things. She smiled insincerely. Why, of course. Let's not delay. We have a full program of events planned at the Emerald Palace. She curiously introduced Lucidia to King Consort Boris and Prince Bradley. Exchanged greeting, or cursely, with the two men. A chauffeur opened their limousine door and they stepped in. Queen Beatrice, Lucidia, and I were escorting, escorted over to a second car. I hope you two don't mind the company. We have so much to catch up on. I thought we should start right away. It would be an honor to ride with you. Splendid. We got into the car and sat facing each other on leather ba ba banquets. The engine trimmed to life, thumbed to life, and we began moving. Let's not beat around the bush. You've come here to ask for help in the war against pals. Uh, I mean, we do need their aid. We're going to lose. So, sure. Naturally, I would love to have a hand in the surrender of that self-styled Duke Reinhardt. The capture of the Oris Gasfield will, of course, be a lovely bonus. It would, wouldn't it? But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Our troops and pals are fully concentrated on winning the war without harming the integrity of the gas field. Any support you can offer will surely increase the chance of success. I should say so. I needn't remind you of the superiority of Rumberg's military technology. I cannot argue with that, Your Excellency. Our homegrown military industry is in its infancy compared to yours. We shall prepare a sizable shipment of our very finest equipment. KA-74s, grenades, body armor. All will be at your disposal. What specialized requests? Rizia's ties to Swordland irk me to no end. 
I'm not a fan of the swords either. Not after the trouble they've been giving you. Exactly. It's true we closed our embassy in Lockhaven, but that was a long time overdue response to the Republic's many attempts to isolate us. And their president, Rain, had the nerve to condemn us. Lucidia looked bemused. She nodded at Beatrice to continue. Frankly, Your Majesty, the fact that Rizia is maintaining its connections to Swordland amounts to a betrayal in my eyes. Yes, I haven't liked President Rain since he forced us to back out of the Gascom talks. That alone is proof that Swordland can no longer be trusted, if it ever could. It may not appear so at the moment, but Rain is most certainly up to something. He will stab both of our kingdoms in the back with no hesitation. Mark my words. Do you understand what I want from you, Your Majesty? My dealings with other foreign leaders are not of any of Rumberg's business. Your Excellency, I assure you our partnership with Rumberg is more valuable to us than our foreign connections. Then I kindly ask you to prove it. Stop associating with the swords and I will consider offering you additional assistance. Alright, here's what I'm willing to do. I will end Rizia's trade deal with Swordland. I mean, why the fuck not? Thank you for the raid finish. Didn't know you were streaming. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Oh, also Tortuga, you raided me too. Thank you also as well. Just, or was that... No, that was yesterday. It says today. Confusing. Now, how else can I help your military? Uh, I need tanks, equipment, I need everything. Is there something experimental you're working on? Something the enemy won't expect at all? Can we nuke them? Interesting that you ask. Our laboratories have been working on a powerful new nerve agent. Whoa! She recoiled in horror. She shook her head slightly. Uh... War crimes! <laughs> um... That sounds extreme. <laughs> Am I gonna lose Lucidia as a lover if I do this? <laughs> um... I'm losing the war so bad. I don't even think tanks will make a difference. Wolfpack, thank you for the raid. All right, f f finish. Are you around here? Can you, can you put a poll? Do we do the war crimes? I need to know if we take the nerve gas. Current poll, war crimes. Meanwhile, I need to step away and use the bathroom, so feel free to vote, guys, and I'll see what you say when I come back. Oh man, I knew you guys were gonna want war crimes. I don't actually think I wanna do it though. I know I took the vote and I know you guys are saying yes to the war crimes.
I'm guessing I'll get myself assassinated if I if I do war crimes though, won't I? Like someone's gonna kill me. They are war crimes if the rest of the world is against me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go against the will of the people. I don't need international intervention. I need more tanks. I need need more trucks. I need <laughs> Do you have nukes? I'd love one or two of those. Oh my, wherever did you get that idea? Is this an interrogation, Duchess Azaro? <laughs> now please let me know if you have any serious requests. Damn! Oh, uh, I would have done nukes if she had, if she had been like, "Here's a nuke." I would have done that. I need tanks and equipment, so I guess equipment. Tanks. Manpower? I love all Gondolas and they love me. Okay. I don't know how much manpower I have left. I don't think I have enough, so give me give me them. All right. Sorry for going against the the vote. My but I've just been trying to I've gotten the Saisons, I think, on side to supporting me by restoring their duchess. My own party is definitely going to try and coup me. But I think I can keep the House of Zaros on side as well. Should the day ever come, Rizzi will be there for you. I am enjoying it, A Atta. Good to see you. You guys have done a great job with this. I do wish the tutorial had more more tips in the for the combat. If I was to if I was to be totally honest, I would say the the combat could use a little bit more hand holding of, or even just like an undo button for certain things because I feel like I accidentally click buttons and lock myself into certain activities. But other than that, really good. BFF mercenary is arriving in secret. What I feel so if she's gonna give me weapons. I need the ability to use those weapons, right? Oh, here we go. So fresh divisions once they train. So we can raise two more tank divisions. Two more mechanized divisions. And one infantry division. That's good. We'll see if that turns the tide. Independent journalists from around the globe are seeking permission to enter the war torn area around Pales to shed light on the realities of war. Uh, supervised access. Stabilization of wartime economy. The invasion of Pales has triggered a wave of uncertainty across our country, leading to panic buying on an unprecedented scale. Our country's industrial might has pivoted almost entirely toward the war effort. Offer subsidies to affected families. Rations of ex essential goods. Subsidies to affected families. That money's going to go away next turn anyway, so I might as well use it while I have it. 
I'm not doing any war crimes, Lord, but what I don't want them to do is be like, this is a quagmire and Rizia can't win. Golden candlesticks stood along the lengths of the table. The royal dining room, their flickering light cast a warm glow on my daughter's face. My mother had hurried into the room holding the train of her silk brooch, crown. Pavel calmly pulled her, out her hair. Truly sorry, dears. It took two ladies in waiting to squeeze me into this old thing. By the way, Alta, if you are still here, um, maybe we could trade emails or something like that, but I'd love to have you on uh, single malt strategy again. I know we talked with Suzerain, if that's something you'd be interested in. No need to respond here in a, in a public forum, but we can trade emails. Truly sorry, dears. It took two ladies in waiting to squeeze me into this old thing. I wouldn't miss supper for the world. It's been ages since the three of us sat around the same table. Even amongst the myriad of demands of war, a king must make time for his family. The same goes for princesses. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's dinner. Has fastidiously wiped the, he fastidiously wiped the dust off an ancient-looking wine bottle before pouring glasses for Vina and my mother, then me. A rare can Canavuto Grand Cru, bottled in 1926, days prior to the uprising. Will do. Thank you. And thanks for stopping by, too. Uh, but it's aged more gracefully than I have. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but even heavier are the under high bags. I love the mom. She's a little bit much at times, but I, I just love... Honestly, the writing for all these characters is brilliant. I looked down at my plate. Dinner tonight was Moki's lobster with rice and plenty of butter. Your father couldn't stand lobster as a child, Vina. I could only get him to eat it by telling him it was a magical creature called a sea pheasant. Wait, there's no such thing as a sea pheasant? What's on your mind, Vina? You know you can tell me anything. I had a long conversation with Manus the other day. The topic of marriage came up. The topic came up? It just it just happened to come up? Is that so? She's so scared of me, and I've only ever been super supportive of her throughout this whole thing. Uh, Rizia definitely feels, I would say, fresh and different than Suzerain. Different in a good way. Lovely indeed. So does this mean we can go through with it? But it's also, I would say it feels familiar in a good way. I think one of the things that really stands out in both games, in my opinion, and I've had people comment in this chat as well, is the writing is tremendous. Couldn't be happier with your choice. Let us begin the planning of the wedding at once. A Rizian princess marrying her true love. Your grandfather would be proud. Everybody in Rizia deserves that right. Everyone? I hope you aren't expecting me to make nice with your new mother-in-law. If I can forgive Angela, Angelica Cezanne, you should as well. What happened to Father was ghastly, but she had no part in it. Manus and I have already started looking for a suitable residence in the capital. We have both duties here. You're already more than an observer. I've noted you speaking up more. Yes, well, I believe I've gained enough experience for my opinions to carry weight. We'll see how much time you have for the council once the babies start coming, sweetheart. Uh... Who said she even needs to have children? 
Yeah, but I might have a ch I might have children with what's her face. Then Vina will be cut out of the role to the throne altogether. Pour yourself a glass, Pobble. And House of Zaro, of course. To true love. I don't want to offend her and be like, but I'm also going to have, have a new love soon. Countering Palazian propaganda, responding to Palazian propaganda. Launch a counter-propaganda campaign. Yes. Alright, is the turn over yet? I need my new soldiers. Low equipment stockpile. That's not to be worried about because we just bought a new stuff. Blutish Freedom Front Mercenaries. Weak power projection. Okay. 11 news. Yeah, that's a lot. Great fact check. Pale's propaganda debunked. Rufus Gregg's royal gossip. Vina engaged. Palace ensures living standards will be maintained. They shouldn't be mad, because I'm going to marry Lucidia whenever it gives me the option, unless I mix that up. Enrica buys Rizian gas com shares. Okay. Where's the next thing? Ensuring continuity of the Taurus royal lineage. Deciding the lineage of Princess Vina's heirs. The future of the Taurus royal lineage is at a crossroads. With the crown princess forthcoming marriage, tradition dictates that she and... Why do I not have children with Lucidia yet? Can I? Unless I have kids. Taurus surname and lineage will carry on through Vina. Saisons can't take over. I will secure the lineage through Vina. Taurus surname and lineage will carry on through Vina. Vina should take the husband's name. I don't. How are one and two different? I don't really know what I just picked, but... Chapter 3, Leviathan. Okay, so security briefing and... The rise of Vendomism's new government. Revolutionary forces and a surprising overpowered the monarch. Extend diplomatic relations. Authority is about the only thing I have. Large Marine Corps. Policies. Have this coal mine? Hey, we at least we leveled out our energy situation. Restrictions on welf welfare services for Golcondist. Dissatisfied Verkus community? That's not good. Golcondas are neutral. House towards what? Regal stability? Average power projection. Okay. 
When do I get to do something with Lucidia? We should have kids now, right? Region of Zill marked in bold lines seemed to draw his gaze like a magnet. My father's fingers gripped the edge of the map with white-knuckled intensity. I could see the pain etched in his face. The scent of alcohol hung heavy in the air. Is this a flashback? A single tear rolled down his cheek. It was the first time I'd ever seen my father cry, and the sight struck me to my core. I stood frozen in the doorway as the weight of his sorrow over the loss of Zill filled the room like a heavy fog. Hello, Your Majesty. I'm glad you could join us. Lucidia's words jolted me back to the present moment. Upon entering the council room, I found Titus and Lucidia. They were awaiting my arrival, promptly rising from their seats. Always a pleasure to be here, so what have you got for me? <laughs> we'll go sarcasm. As you might already know, we're to go over the latest updates regarding the transfer of Zill to Rizian governorship. But before we do, we should go over the final findings regarding the Friendship Day bombing and get that off the plate. Excellent. Unfortunately, I don't have substantial updates to provide. Although you asked us to investigate PAL's potential involvement further since the onset of the war, we've faced significant limitations. Accessing necessary facilities and conducting interviews with PALs has proven challenging due to heightened security measures and restricted movement in the region. Additionally, communicating cha communication channels have been disrupted, making it difficult to gather first-hand information. As much as I hate to say it, we've hit a dead end. I appreciate your honesty, Titus. It's a challenging situation. As you're aware, Valen's three-year probationary period, as Smolik called it, is coming to an end. If they uphold our agreement, we could see a peaceful transfer of governorship in a few months. What are the chances he'll follow through? Here's where we're regarding progress regarding Zill's return. At the moment, our chances of a peaceful transfer are highly unlikely. With all that in mind, I suggest reviewing the contingency plan we made earlier for the return of Zill and Lou for an agreement with Valen. What are our options? The way I see it, we can either approach this diplomatically or, if necessary, take more aggressive stance. Let's begin with a diplomatic approach. Thoughts? While we don't have a lot of options, we could continue supporting ATA. Further, the advocacy for Rizian values and culture could help garner support from the populace by encouraging them to push for a referendum on reunification. People tend to value having a say in sharpening their own destiny or shaping their own destiny. Haven't we been paying them this whole time? What are our non-diplomatic steps? Is there like an option to do some kind of referendum or something? Let's wait to see how the situation develops. Would this make Titus mad? I'm always happy to suck up to Lucidia, but I also need Titus my Good work, team.
Something on your mind, Duchess? Just thought I'd see what your plans are for the rest of the day, and if you needed company. I thought you'd never ask. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for today's episode. We deposed a duke uh, and maybe cut the legs out from underneath a potential coup that had been ruminating in our uh, family. Potentially. I don't know. I'm just I'm just guessing. Uh, we're about to jump back into the war phase, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. We are late endgame. There's probably two or three episodes left in this series, but... Leave your thoughts as always down below, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.